Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today I'll be recapping the green and white scrimmage from what I saw. Uh, before we get started, just wanted to mention you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary NY. And if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast. All right. So the green and white scrimmage, first off, just wanted to say it was an absolute blast. I was able to hang out with Ali from Loyal NY Jet fans. I was able to hang out with Ryan from Jets Talk 24-7. The first time I met both of those guys, I was able to meet a lot of people there. A lot of people came up to us. You know, we just talked a little bit, talked some Jets football. So if you did come up to us. And just, you know, talk for a little bit. We really appreciated it. It was an absolute blast meeting so many people there. I I had a ton of fun with it. And again, thank you. I, I said this to most of you guys who came up to us, but just wanted to say again, thank you for supporting. It really means a lot. And hopefully the Jets have a good year for us because that would make life a lot more fun as a fan of the New York Jets. Okay, so let's get into it. Wilson struggled. That, that was the biggest takeaway. Uh, the unofficial stat line was 11 of 24, 112 yards, two interceptions. The first pick he threw pretty much right to Javelin Gidry, and the second one was a tip drill kind of a play. Um, Joyner came in, made a nice play on the ball, tipped it up, and Mosley made a really nice diving catch. And if CJ Mosley is back and, you know, even 85% the player he was or 80% the player he was, and that's a really good thing for this Jets defense, but... First team offense really didn't do all that much. They only had a field goal. Uh, their best drive was that field goal drive. It was a 13 play drive, if I'm not mistaken. It was right after the first Gidry interception. They pretty much put Wilson right back on the field. He marched him down a little bit. They were moving the ball. Um, and then it kind of stalled once they got in the red zone and they kicked a field goal. But ultimately, the first team offense, a lot of three and outs. Uh, I thought the defensive line did a good job getting pressure. Uh, Wilson was a little indecisive and uh, a little inaccurate. He was throwing behind people a little bit. But look, it's not something where I'm like hitting the panic button over. Rookie quarterbacks are going to have bad practices. It's going to happen. Uh, rookie quarterbacks are inconsistent. There'll be weeks where he looks really, really good. There'll be weeks where he looks bad, like last night. Um, and that's just the bumps and bruises of a rookie quarterback. It's no reason to panic. It's no reason to say they made the wrong decision at the quarterback position. Heck, they even ha they haven't even played a preseason game yet. So pump the brakes on the panic because uh, I got a lot of questions on it and with his performance. And yeah, I'll be the first one to admit Zach Wilson did not play well. That does not mean he's going to be bad in this league. Like, Relax, please. To a positive, Michael Carter. I thought he had a few nice runs, picked up a few first downs. He had a long kick return. He had the receiving touchdown with the second team offense. I think it was Mike White who threw it to him. Uh, good stuff. Uh, I, I thought he probably looked like the best running back. And then Coleman right behind him, I thought had a solid night. I'm really excited about the running back depth on this team. I think the top three, uh, it, it's Coleman one. Uh, excuse me. I, I would say Carter one, Coleman two. And then Ty Johnson, three. That seemed to be the way that they'd look uh, to mix in the reps. But to be honest with you, even the Michael Piron, I thought, looked better uh, than what I remember from last year. So really good night for the running backs um, in in a, pretty much when the passing attack did not look good uh, for most of the night. Another positive with this one in person, Elijah Moore just looks different. I don't know, the speed, the crisp route running. He's going to be a good one for the New York Jets. And there were a few times on third down where Wilson was looking his way. That's good. I mean, obviously you have safety blankets like Jameson Crowder and Corey Davis or, you know, some more veteran options. Well, the fact that he was going to more on third down is a really, really good sign. And I can't wait to see what he does in the regular season. He didn't have any like f super flashy kind of plays like we've seen in the past. But I think that's just more because the offense in general wasn't really that good last night. Um, but the, the hype is real and seeing him in person was tremendous. Also, not really a shocking conclusion, but I don't think the Jets kickers are very good. I don't know if their opening day kicker is on the roster. Nugar was not good. He In the gauntlet, he made the first one and then missed his next three kicks. Amendola was working with the first teams. He did very well in the gauntlet, and then he missed an extra point to end his night, so it kind of just left a sour taste in your mouth. Uh, I, I definitely think it's not going to be Nugar as the, the starter. I think if any of them, it would maybe be Amendola, but I might even be surprised at this point. I think they're going to be looking at the waiver wire and see who gets cut later in camp and bring somebody else in because I'm not super confident even in Amendola that he's going to be the guy, but I guess we'll see. Right now, tight end one seems to be Croft. He seems to be working with the ones a little bit more. Yes, they mixed it in. Herndon did get some opportunities, but to me, it looks more like Croft as the number one, which is 
fine, I guess. We'll see how if that continues in the preseason games and into the regular season. Uh, but right now, it looks like they're leaning more so on the veteran. For the Denzel Mims crowd, no, he's not getting traded. No, he's not getting cut. Uh, he was working with the second and the third team mixing up there. It was mostly a quiet night for him. Uh, he didn't see a ton of action in the scrimmage, but he made one of the better catches of the night where he made a leaping grab to pick up a first down. It was like a little bit uh, down and comeback. back. was able to beat two defenders, but it was a classic Denzel Mims play. Went up to the high point, made the catch, pulled it in. That was one of the you know wow moments uh, from the night. And... I hope to see him play a little bit more because I, I think his ceiling is higher than uh, some of the other guys who are in front of him. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I don't expect to see Berrios or Vincent Smith um, or Malone really getting reps in, in the preseason and regular season over him. Um, some guys are still panicking about it. I'm not quite there yet. I think he's too talented. Uh, and he showed last night why um, with, that, with that play. So hopefully he gets some more action as the season goes on. And again, Miss a lot of minicamp. They're easing him back in, so I'm not writing him off on the roster bubble or anything like that. Some final notes for me. A lot of pre-snap motion, which is something we did not see at all during the Adam Gase era. It's just, it adds a different element. This is the 21st century football we were looking for, and that is going to be a much added plus. Again, I know I said the offense wasn't great last night, but that's just a positive sign from a play calling perspective that they are, you know, playing in today's NFL and not trying to play early 2000s football. I thought the defensive line looked really good, and that's even without Quinn and Williams. Um, Carl Lawson was just doing his thing. John Franklin Myers, I thought, had some nice reps, and Huff, too, on the edge. Uh, edge was really good. It was tough to kind of see the interior guys, uh, but from the from the edge, I thought those three had a relatively good night. Uh, and I love seeing C.J. Mosley back. He looked skinny. He looked like he was in good shape. Uh, he was moving around all over the place. Um on, who else on the defense? Joiner too, I thought had a good night. And Bryce Hall was over everybody. There were a few times where I think it was Corey Davis made a couple of plays over him, but the coverage was right there. He, he definitely looks far and away the best corner on the roster, so be excited for him during the season. But yeah, overall takeaways from the green and white scrimmage. Offense, quiet, no reason to panic. It was a great time meeting you all, you guys. Let me know in the comments below if you were there and what you thought about it. What do you think of the recap? That'll do it for me. I'm Matt O'Leary. Please subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you next time.